Um, okay, Zoolander, you've probably seen. I have not. You haven't seen Zoolander seen either? Zoolander? I have I I have a thing against Will Ferrell. But now the forbidden fruit must be tasted. Well, when Maury told me what you were willing to do, <laughs> I. <laughs> Todd! Are you not aware that I get farty and bloated with a foamy latte? <laughs> My mistake, Chocolatebeam! Your mistake indeed! <laughs> Yes, Derek. Let's get back to the reason that we're really here. <laughs> Without much further ado, I give you the Derek Zoolander Center for Kids Who Can't Read Good. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> A center for ants? <laughs> what? How can we be expected to teach children to learn how to read if they can't even fit inside the building? <laughs> Derek, it's just a I don't want to hear your excuses! <laughs> the center has to be at least... Twice. Three times bigger than this. <laughs> He's absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. Okay. Uh, a lot of things that work in this one. Good character work. Uh, you have the physicality in the beginning with the uh, the coffee or the latte. Uh, you bring up farts. Everybody loves farts, of course. You have the interaction with the uh, whoever that is that brought it in with the grunts and the mm -hmm. awkward conversation uh, while he's just sitting there. Then you have the physicality of it, the 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 absurdity of the running in the big empty room, uh, the way he was flicking his feet. Uh, the, the sound and the echoing, uh, which also plays a really good role in that. Uh, pulling out the, the, the title, just using the title of the Center for, for Kids Who Can't Read Good. <laughs> and uh, you want to learn to do stuff better. better and do stuff better. <laughs> so you have that, uh, you again, juxtaposition of a higher education with, you know, lower education. <laughs> <laughs> this needs to be three times bigger. Right. It needs to be at least three times yeah. that size. Yeah. <laughs> He's right. Uh, yeah. Comedy is also about exaggeration. Yes. And there's tons of exaggeration. A lot of times when you think of exaggeration, you think of things being bigger or faster. But you can also go the other direction with exaggeration. Right. Exagger understatement is also a form of exaggeration. And so when uh, Derek says it needs to be three times that size, he's actually... He hasn't exaggerated it enough right. to actually make it correct, and so his understatement is an exaggeration. That's, Which makes it fun. Yeah. Right. That makes it funny. The running, the echoing, all of that is an exaggeration of reality. Covering up that little that little model, right. you know, and then yanking yanking it off, and all of that is exaggeration, and it's ridiculous because real people don't operate like that if someone if someone actually did that if you were actually in somebody's office <laughs> and they ran across <laughs> and yanked that thing off you would go man this guy's a is a fruitcake right he's a loon yeah the absurdity of it and that's the the thing with comedy is you can go too absurd as well and people go oh, i don't buy that you know but where you just go slightly under uh you need to find that balance of you know is it too far is it too little and setting expectations leading you to a certain expectation that it's going to be you know, this, you know, he's going to say, this needs to be full size or whatever. And then coming in under that right. and still being wrong about it. Yeah. Uh, just for the, the producer's sake, this is the, uh, the gasoline fight. All right. So this is Zoolander and his other model buddies. They're sorting through their issues, man. Yep.
<laughs> okay, so there, okay. You, there you go. Uh, <coughs> oh my gosh. Um, the ending, we'll just talk about the ending. Uh, it just plays off of the whole, everything you see with the models and the, mm -hmm. you know, splashing each other with water when they do like car washes and that, that whole trope of all of that. And so you have them, you know, uh, windshield wash, uh, which they have, and then gasoline, <laughs> which is just, <laughs> you just take the absurdity we talked about absurdity and you just take it from like okay they're flicking each other with with antifreeze or whatever and then all of a sudden yeah and then all of a sudden it's gasoline which is just so, so, so ridiculous they're spraying. it's not even possible because they both have hoses yeah. where did they get the other hose it's just going everywhere like all they're over the car all got all the gasoline the hoses that they're spraying each other with in the background of the gasoline fight you have something fun and peppy like uh, Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go just to kind of like bring it to silly uh, levels. So the music adds a great element to it. And then, you know, you go with the lighter, uh, the lighting of the, the cigarette and the explosion. And everybody, just, yeah, everybody, everybody dies. dies. Everybody dies in a fire explosion. Very funny. It's right. a it's, good it's contrast yeah. again. Where that, and that's the, that's the key to comedy. Yeah. It would be, it, you could take that scene, like you could insert that into the most dark, you know, horrific movie. Yep. And it would still make people laugh. With comedy is there, there's always the twist. Like we're, we're always familiar with, you know, leading in misdirection. But there's also another way to make people laugh, which is to end up exactly where you think you're going to end up. Where you see the train coming. The first time he pulls the, the hose out of it and sprays the other guy, you're like, oh, oh this that's is not, not yeah, This is <laughs> not going to end well. Yeah, that's not good. Uh, so by the time that it hits, you're you're ready to just laugh. You have the the gas station attendants there. <laughs> yes, just looking. You know, they on. just cuts to them, and they're just both they're both just watching what's going on. And that is also to ground the scene in reality. There's still right. a, there's still reality happening right. outside the scene. So it just it elevates the absurdity of it. I mean, you've got people who are regular, ordinary gas station attendants who are watching this scene, and then you know, as the audience, oh, this really is absurd. Yeah. It's not. It's not some alter world that right. we're watching. This is this is actual real life. These guys are just idiots. Be the scene in the in the coal miners bar. There it is. <laughs> All you gotta do is type water is the essence. Derek Zoolander, the male model, is in a coal miner's bar with his father and the various employees of the coal mine that his dad works with. And this comes on the television <laughs> over the bar. Is that John Boyd's his dad. Juxtaposition of coal miner, tough, mm -hmm. manly, hard, hard nose, and then you have him coming up shirtless as a merman <laughs> and just <laughs> seeing everybody in the bar just like this is ridiculous. You know, they still got like dirty faces from working there and uh, just the, the look of like what what is this? <laughs> Derek, when it first comes on, he's kind yeah, of he, proud. Yeah, he's he kind of got up, a little yeah. smile and says, oh, here we go. Everybody's going to get to see what I do. His dad is obviously not impressed. Right. He goes, this is what it is to see my son as a mermaid, you know? And, and Derek goes, merman. Merman. <laughs> so he's actually <laughs> indignant with his father for calling him a mermaid. <laughs> Such a great movie. All right. <laughs> and he tells his... He tells he goes, <laughs> I've got the black lung. <laughs> <laughs>